psychology facts about human behavior that will blow your mind. When we talk about the largest female genitalia, it's essential to approach the subject with sensitivity and scientific curiosity. Throughout history, the size and shape of genitalia have often been surrounded by myths and exaggerations. However, recorded cases such as those documented in medical journals of the 19th and 20th centuries provide us with factual information. For instance, one notable case from the late 1800s involved a woman from Paris whose unusually large labia were studied by doctors fascinated by human anatomy's variations. Here's a prevalent myth in society that a true orgasm for women should be vaginal, meaning it should result from penetrative intercourse alone. However, research and clinical observations show that the majority of women do not orgasm through penetration alone without clitoral stimulation. Only about 18 to 30 percent of women report being able to achieve orgasm through vaginal intercourse alone. The female genitalia, primarily the external part known as the vulva, includes the labia majora and labia minora, the clitoris, and the vaginal opening. Each part has its unique sensitivity and role in sexual pleasure. The clitoris, often highlighted for its pivotal role in female pleasure, has roughly 8,000 nerve endings making it highly sensitive and a key player in achieving sexual satisfaction. The human body has always been a subject of fascination and mystery, and female genitalia are no exception. Throughout history, the perception and understanding of female genitalia have varied greatly. In ancient times, the size and shape of female genitalia were often linked with various myths and misconceptions. For instance, in classical Greece, large genitalia were sometimes associated with lewdness and were depicted in satirical plays and art. Moving forward to the Renaissance, anatomical studies began to change perceptions. Pioneers like Andreas Vesalius started to study the human body more scientifically, offering more accurate representations and dispelling many myths. However, societal attitudes were slow to change and many misconceptions continued to persist. Throughout history, female genitalia have been both venerated and vilified. In ancient civilizations like Greece and India, representations of female genitalia were not merely biological but were imbued with significant cultural and religious meanings. For example, the ancient Greeks had a figure known as Baobo, a mythological figure associated with female genital display as a symbol of fertility and protection. In contrast, during the Middle Ages in Europe, the female body, and particularly genitalia, were often associated with sin and temptation, reflecting the period's religious strictures. This dichotomy illustrates how cultural context significantly shapes the understanding of female anatomy. Sigmund Freud's theories prominently featured sexuality and its development. Freud posited that understanding a person's sexual life was key to understanding their psychological health. He introduced concepts like penis envy, which suggested a complex involving female children's realization of their lack of penis, which has been widely criticized and reinterpreted in modern psychology. The myth that larger or smaller genitalia impacts sexual satisfaction has been debunked by numerous studies indicating that satisfaction is influenced more by emotional factors and communication between partners. Contemporary psychologists focus more on body positivity and understanding the psychological impact of societal attitudes towards female bodies. Studies show that how women perceive their bodies can significantly impact their mental health and self-esteem. Media portrayal of bodies, especially in pornography and advertising, often presents a very narrow and often unrealistic image of what female genitalia should look like. This can create unrealistic expectations which studies have shown to affect sexual confidence and satisfaction. Highlighting diversity in genital appearance can help counteract these stereotypes and promote a healthier self-image among viewers. Research indicates that how women perceive their genitalia can have direct implications on their sexual health. Women who feel ashamed or embarrassed by their genitalia are less likely to seek regular gynecological care, potentially leading to adverse health outcomes. Pro a positive genital self-image is strongly linked to better sexual function. This includes more frequent orgasms and higher overall satisfaction. Addressing body image issues can thus be a key approach in improving overall sexual health and satisfaction. Moting a positive genital self-image is crucial for encouraging proactive health behaviors. Elective genital surgeries, such as labiaplasty, have psychological implications that extend beyond physical appearance.
Research indicates that while some women report improved self-esteem and sexual satisfaction post-surgery, others may experience minimal psychological benefits, suggesting that expectations and the underlying reasons for seeking surgery are crucial. Discussing the psychological aspects of why individuals opt for such surgeries can help demystify the subject and encourage more thoughtful decision-making. Women have been found to exhibit higher erotic plasticity than men. This concept refers to the extent to which the sex drive can be shaped by cultural, social, and situational factors. Studies suggest that women's sexual attitudes, behaviors, and desires are more likely to change over time and in different contexts, including how they perceive their own bodies. Understanding this can lead to more nuanced conversations about sexual identity and expression. Attitudes towards sex toys and practices like oral sex vary widely across cultures. In Iceland, the UK, and Norway, the use of vibrators during foreplay is particularly popular, indicating a more open attitude towards exploring different methods of sexual pleasure. By contrast, in many parts of Africa and among certain religious groups, oral sex is viewed as unnatural or sinful. These cultural perceptions can significantly affect individual sexual behavior and openness in relationships. Studies have found that men who participate more in household chores tend to have more frequent sex. This may be linked to perceptions of fairness and partnership in a relationship, which can enhance emotional closeness and sexual desire. He US has an array of laws regulating sexual behavior, more so than many European countries. For instance, sex toys are banned in places like Alabama, and other specific sexual acts are legally restricted in various states. These laws not only reflect cultural norms but also affect how individuals express their sexuality, potentially leading to stress or conflict about sexual desires and practices. Foreplay is crucial for many women to achieve orgasm, with only 30% able to reach orgasm through intercourse alone. Men's Health highlights that proper foreplay is akin to stretching before a workout. Not only does it prepare the body for physical activity, but it also builds anticipation and enhances the overall experience. Common misconceptions about sex, such as the belief that a longer female genitalia provides more pleasure, can create anxiety and dissatisfaction in sexual relationships. It's important for sexual education to address these myths, providing factual information about what factors genuinely contribute to satisfying sexual experiences. A significant discrepancy known as the orgasm gap exists between men and women in heterosexual relationships. Studies, including one from the Journal of Sex Research, have found that while 85% of men reported their female partner had an orgasm during their most recent sexual encounter, only about 64% of women reported having one. This gap often stems from lack of communication, insufficient foreplay, and misunderstandings about female sexual response which can lead to frustration and decreased relationship satisfaction. Believing that vaginal orgasms are necessary for complete sexual satisfaction can lead to feelings of inadequacy, sexual dissatisfaction, and unnecessary pressure in both partners. Women who do not experience vaginal orgasms may feel dysfunctional, despite this being the physiological norm. Their partners might also feel inadequate for not being able to provide an orgasm through penetration, which can affect relationship dynamics and self-esteem. The vagina has a natural pH level that ranges from 3.8 to 4.5, which is slightly acidic. This acidity helps to protect against bacterial infections and maintains a healthy balance of yeast and bacteria. The composition of vaginal flora can change with life stages, sexual activity, and overall health, emphasizing the importance of maintaining a healthy vaginal environment. Unlike other parts of the body that require external cleaning, the vagina is self-cleaning and produces secretions that help to expel bacteria and dead cells. This natural mechanism is why douching or using scented products can actually disrupt the vaginal flora and increase the risk of infections. The vagina is incredibly elastic, able to stretch significantly during sexual intercourse and childbirth. Its resting size can vary between women but it typically measures between three to four inches in depth. During arousal, the vagina expands both in length and width to accommodate penetration, a phenomenon known as vaginal tenting. The existence of the G-spot, a sensitive area located on the front wall of the vagina, is still subject to scientific debate. However, many women report a distinct area that, when stimulated, 
can lead to powerful orgasms and sometimes a phenomenon known as female ejaculation. This fluid is different from urine and is believed to come from the skein's glands. A woman's sexual desire can fluctuate throughout her menstrual cycle, with many reporting increased libido around ovulation. This peak in sexual interest coincides with biological fertility, suggesting a link between reproductive readiness and sexual activity. The clitoris is the only organ in the human body, either male or female, whose sole function is to provide pleasure. It contains over 8,000 nerve endings, making it one of the most sensitive areas of the female body. Its internal structure extends into the body, surrounding the vaginal canal and contributing to sensations felt during intercourse. Similar to the gut, the vagina has its own microbiome, primarily dominated by lactobacillus bacteria, which play a crucial role in maintaining vaginal health. Changes in this microbiome can lead to conditions like bacterial vaginosis or yeast infections, highlighting the importance of a balanced vaginal ecosystem. During childbirth, the vagina can stretch considerably to accommodate a newborn, which is typically around the size of a small watermelon. Postpartum recovery can vary from woman to woman, with the vagina generally returning to its pre-birth size, though not always its exact original shape. This natural resilience highlights the vagina's incredible adaptability and strength. The external part of the female genitalia, known as the vulva, varies significantly in appearance from one woman to another. Variations in the size, color, and shape of the labia both majora and minora are normal, with no two vulvas being exactly alike. Promoting understanding and acceptance of vulvar diversity is essential to combating body image issues and enhancing sexual confidence. Vaginal lubrication is primarily a response to sexual arousal and is produced by the Bartholin's glands, located near the vaginal opening. This natural lubrication facilitates sexual intercourse, reducing friction and enhancing pleasure. Lubrication levels can be affected by factors such as hormones, medication, and overall hydration. In history, there are accounts and medical records that detail extraordinary cases of human anatomy. One of norms, women's bodies were frequently depicted in art and literature as objects of purity, with little acknowledgement of their sexual desires. Natural lubrication can vary widely among women. Factors such as hormonal levels, arousal, hydration, and even diet can influence vaginal lubrication. Understanding and addressing these variations can lead to more comfortable and enjoyable sexual experiences. For many women, emotional intimacy is deeply intertwined with sexual satisfaction. Feeling emotionally connected and understood by a partner can significantly enhance the physical aspects of sex. Women's sexual peaks can occur at different times in their lives. While men typically reach their sexual peak in their late teens, women often experience heightened sexual desire and satisfaction in their 30s and 40s. Women can experience a wide range of sexual responses from clitoral orgasms to vaginal and blended orgasms. Each type of orgasm can offer different sensations and levels of pleasure. Vaginal size does not determine sexual pleasure. The key to sexual satisfaction lies in emotional connection, technique, and mutual understanding between partners. The vagina is highly elastic and capable of returning to its pre-pregnancy state. Pelvic floor exercises can aid in this recovery process. Women's sexual desires can be just as strong as men's, though they may be influenced by different factors, such as emotional connection and relationship dynamics. In ancient Rome, women's sexuality was often tied to fertility and procreation. However, Roman literature and art also celebrated sexual pleasure and eroticism. During the Middle Ages, female sexuality was heavily regulated by the church. Women were often viewed as either pure and virtuous or as temptresses, leading to a dichotomy in how their sexuality was perceived. The Victorian era is known for its prudish attitudes towards sex. Women were expected to be modest and chaste and discussions of sexual pleasure were largely taboo. The 20th century saw significant changes, particularly with the sexual revolution of the 1960s and 70s. This era promoted sexual freedom and the exploration of female pleasure. If building intimacy outside the bedroom is crucial. Engaging in activities that foster emotional closeness can strengthen the sexual relationship. Estrogen helps maintain vaginal health and lubrication which is essential for comfortable and pleasurable sex. It also affects mood and sexual desire. 
In ancient Greece, the vagina was often depicted in art and literature as a symbol of fertility and beauty. It was celebrated in religious rituals and revered in mythology. Many indigenous cultures around the world have revered the vagina as a sacred and powerful symbol. In some traditions, it is considered a source of life and creativity. During the medieval period in Europe, the vagina was often viewed through a lens of modesty and morality. Women's sexuality was heavily regulated by religious and societal norms. In contemporary Western society, there has been a shift towards greater openness and acceptance of female sexuality. Movements advocating for body positivity and sexual health have helped to demystify and celebrate the vagina. How a woman perceives her own body, including her vagina, can influence her self-esteem and sexual confidence. Promoting a positive body image is crucial for mental and emotional health. In many ancient cultures, rituals involving the vagina were performed to promote fertility and honor deities associated with reproduction. Historical treatments for vaginal health issues ranged from herbal remedies to more invasive practices. Some of these practices were based on cultural beliefs rather than medical science. The vagina has often been a powerful symbol in mythology and folklore. It has represented everything from creation and life to mystery and taboo. Vaginas come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. There is no normal or ideal appearance. The vagina is rich in nerve endings, especially in the outer third near the vaginal opening. This area, including the clitoris and G-spot, is highly sensitive and can produce intense pleasure when stimulated. The clitoris is often considered the powerhouse of female pleasure. Although it's located outside the vaginal canal, its internal structure extends into the vagina, contributing to sensations during penetration. Located a few inches inside the vagina on the anterior wall, the G-spot can provide a different type of pleasure. Stimulation here can lead to intense orgasms for some women. Many women require clitoral stimulation to achieve orgasm. Penetrative sex alone is not always sufficient for all women. Vaginal tightness can vary due to many factors, including genetics and muscle tone. It is not a reliable indicator of sexual history. Ancient cultures, such as those in India and China, often celebrated female sexuality and included detailed knowledge of female pleasure in their texts and practices. A wide vagina, in this context, refers to the vaginal canal's ability to expand and accommodate. This isn't a static characteristic, the vagina is incredibly adaptable. During sexual arousal, the vaginal tissues swell, and the canal can widen significantly to facilitate penetration. One of the key psychological benefits of having a wider vagina is the increased comfort during sex. Women who experience less discomfort are likely to feel more confident and relaxed, which can significantly enhance their overall sexual experience. Women with larger vaginas might worry about not providing enough friction or pleasure during intercourse, leading to anxiety and self-consciousness. Psychology facts about human behavior that will blow your mind. Did you know that receiving oral sex significantly increases the likelihood of a woman reaching orgasm during sexual activity? For example, in a study of college women, the probability of reaching orgasm during a sexual hookup with intercourse was 24%. But, if the woman received oral sex during the encounter, that probability doubled to 48%. Now that's quite a difference. Here's another fascinating fact. Swallowing semen can actually help women get pregnant. How? Ingesting a man's semen can prevent a woman's body from seeing it as a foreign substance, potentially leading to higher fertility rates. Amazing, right? Humans aren't the only species that perform oral sex. Did you know that Chinese fruit bats, bonobo chimpanzees, cheetahs, tigers, and even black bears engage in oral pleasuring too? Nature is full of surprises. In medieval Europe, Oral sex was actually banned because it was considered unnatural since it couldn't lead to procreation. Those found guilty of cunnilingus were given four years of penance, while those who committed fellatio were given five, like the harsh punishment. Among sexual minorities, lesbian and bisexual women are more likely to say oral sex counts as sex compared to gay and bisexual men. In fact, while a majority of lesbian and bisexual women say oral sex is definitely sex, only about one-third of gay and bi men say the same. It's important to note that oral sex is not risk-free. Bacterial infections like chlamydia and gonorrhea, as well as viral infections like herpes and HPV, can be spread through oral sex. And here's an unexpected fact pubic lice can spread to mustaches and beards through oral sex. If you're finding value in this video, 
hit the like button. And if you hit the subscribe button, you'll have more satisfying orgasms well. Maybe not literally, but it will definitely make us happy and it will help us make better content. Oral sex was considered a felony in almost every state in the U.S. in 1950. As of 2014, 12 states still had anti-sodomy laws on the books, including Alabama, Florida, Idaho, Kansas, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, North Carolina, Oklahoma, South Carolina, Texas, and Utah. Women often cannot orgasm with penetrative sex alone. Higher rates of orgasm occur in women whose partners perform cunnilingus. Research also indicates that males are more likely than females to have received oral sex, whereas equal proportions of men and women have given oral sex. A recent study suggests that the use of antibacterial mouthwash may help prevent the spread of oral gonorrhea infection. Interesting, right? Science is always coming up with new insights. Researchers at Rutgers University used MRI imaging to find out exactly what happens in your brain when you're aroused. Different regions of the brain become activated in response to stimulation of the vagina, cervix, clitoris, and nipples. The average female orgasm lasts 20 seconds minus 14 seconds longer than the male orgasm during sexual intercourse. And here's a fun fact in addition to the genitals and breasts. The inner nose also swells during arousal. Sperm banks store donor semen at minus 321 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, semen can be stored indefinitely. While giving birth, some women have been known to experience orgasm. Besides humans, bonobos and dolphins are the only animals that have sex for pleasure. Despite many people using it as a common excuse to avoid sex, sex can actually relieve a headache since it releases tension that restricts blood vessels in the brain. Studies have shown that 85% of men who die of heart attacks during intercourse were cheating on their wives. Guilty consciences, I suppose. Greek couples have sex an average of 138 times a year, placing them at the top of the World Sex League. Japanese couples, on the other hand, have sex just 45 times a year, putting them in last place. During an average man's lifetime, he will ejaculate approximately 17 liters of semen amounting to about half a trillion sperm. When a man ejaculates, the initial spurt travels at 28 mph, faster than the world record for the 100 m sprint. For both men and women, the heart rate averages 140 beats per minute at orgasm that's considered tachycardia. Marilyn Monroe, the most celebrated sex icon of the 20th century, confessed to a friend that despite her three husbands and a parade of lovers, she had never had an orgasm. A teaspoon of semen contains approximately five calories. Half an hour of intense sex burns off an average of 100 to 200 calories. The vibrator, a common sex toy for women, was originally designed in the 19th century to fight the anxiety-related symptoms of hysteria. There was even a play about it called In the Next Room, also known as the Vibrator Play performed in 2009. A chicken egg could accommodate the number of female OVA necessary to repopulate the Earth to its present population. The Earth could be repopulated to its current level, using the amount of sperm that could fit in an aspirin capsule. In Aztec culture, avocados were considered so sexually powerful that virgins were restricted from contact with them. Chocolate contains phenylethylamine, the same feel-good chemical responsible for the ecstatic high people experience in sexual attraction and love. Researchers have repeatedly observed female penguins exchanging sexual favors with male penguins that aren't their mates in exchange for pebbles to build nests for their babies. Yes, female penguins engage in a bizarre form of prostitution. The earliest known illustration of a man using a condom during sexual intercourse is painted on the wall of a cave in France, dated between 12,000 and 15,000 years old. In ancient Greece, the common slang for oral sex was playing the flute. During World War I, members of the British Secret Intelligence Service, MI6, discovered you could use semen as invisible ink. They stopped using it after realizing how badly it smelled when it got old. Practicing safe sex is crucial, even with oral sex. Using condoms or dental dams can help reduce the risk of sexually transmitted infections, STEEs. Flavored condoms and dental dams are widely available and can make the experience more enjoyable while keeping both partners safe. Regular STI testing is important for sexually active individuals. Knowing your status and that of your partner can prevent the spread of infections and ensure both of you are healthy. Many clinics offer free or low-cost testing, so don't hesitate to get checked regularly. 
Oral sex can enhance intimacy and satisfaction in relationships. It's an opportunity to explore your partner's body and create a deeper bond. Studies show that couples who engage in a variety of sexual activities, including oral sex, often report higher relationship satisfaction. It's not true that you can't get an STI from oral sex. As we mentioned earlier, infections like herpes, HPV, and gonorrhea can be transmitted orally. Another myth is that oral sex is only for younger couples, but in reality, people of all ages can enjoy and benefit from it. Historically, oral sex has been depicted in various forms of art and literature. From ancient frescoes to modern erotica, it's clear that this form of sexual expression has been part of human culture for centuries. These depictions reflect changing attitudes towards sexuality and highlight its enduring significance. Oral sex is enjoyed by people of all sexual orientations and gender identities. Whether you're in a heterosexual, homosexual, or non-binary relationship, exploring oral sex can be a fulfilling part of your sexual repertoire. Respect and understanding for your partner's preferences and boundaries are key to a positive experience. As people age, their sexual needs and desires can change, but that doesn't mean oral sex can't be a part of their lives. Many older adults continue to enjoy a fulfilling sex life, including oral sex, which can be an important part of maintaining intimacy and connection with their partners. Semen contains various compounds that can have health benefits for women. For instance, semen includes hormones like testosterone and estrogen, which can improve mood and increase feelings of affection. Additionally, proteins and minerals found in semen can have potential health benefits when ingested, though more research is needed in this area. Pornography often portrays oral sex in ways that don't reflect real-life experiences or emphasize consent and mutual enjoyment. It's important to recognize that what you see in porn isn't always an accurate depiction of healthy sexual behavior. Focusing on communication, consent, and mutual satisfaction is essential for a positive experience. There are also various sex toys designed to enhance oral sex, from flavored lubricants to vibrating devices, these tools can add a new dimension to your sexual experience. Experimenting with different products can help you and your partner discover new ways to enjoy oral sex. Hygiene is crucial when it comes to oral sex. Maintaining good oral hygiene by brushing and flossing regularly can reduce the risk of transmitting infections. Additionally, both partners should ensure that their genital areas are clean before engaging in oral sex to enhance comfort and safety. Did you know that the earliest known illustration of a man using a condom during sexual intercourse dates back to 12,000 to 15,000 years ago? This ancient art can be found on the walls of a cave in France, showcasing that safe sex practices have a very long history. Like, comment, and subscribe for more from the wisdom of psychology.